Marcus has found the perfect place to write his music and set up his new £130,000 studio, which Pat has just bought for him. I recently moved in here just about four weeks ago. Um, it's, 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 it's a new apartment I got. With the next six months as I'm writing, it's just going to be crucial for me. The material that I write is probably going to be the most crucial stage in my career because what I'm going to write is going to break me as an artist. So what I'm planning here is to get every last ingredient right. Um, and this is all part of it. This is where I'm going to be working every day. I will literally just lock myself away seven days and nights a week. Um, I'll have my phones off and I'll just really, really just get so involved in my music. So where I live and where I work is just, it's just crucial to me. Marcus said to me, Pat, I found this perfect apartment. It's exactly where I want to work. And I said, great. He said, where is it? It's in Balls Bridge. OK. I said, right. I said, um, and of course, my mind immediately just goes, because that's where my mind is at. Like, I said, there's the logical account. And I said, I move into, uh, and he says, um, £3,400 a month. And it's perfect. You have to see this room. Like, it's three rooms, and they're fabulous. And there's three bedrooms, and it's this, and it's that. And I says, right, OK. And I suppose this was it, like, you know, the guy wanted to do this, and I said, you know, who am I to question this? Barry Livingston used to walk up here, and there's a lot of people who, in that creative world, seem to come here to walk. One of the guys from Westlife also live here. And it's, um, it's a very creative, uh, secluded place and environment to sort of try and do something like I'm trying to do. My apartment's just up, just up here. There's one thing Marcus never says is that's no, and there's something I never said to Marcus. I've never said no to Marcus. So Marcus says, can you, you know, um, I want to do this. I've never said you can't do that. That doesn't exist between us. This is my new prison. <laughs> this is where I'm going to be writing my album over the next six months. This is where I cook. It's a little kitchen. So, uh... It's a pretty big apartment, that's just it's like a little chill-out room, like a relaxation place if I just want to go away from a writing or anything. This is just my, my bedroom, it's got a, it's got a balcony. So it's, 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 it's beautiful here, even the air is very, very clean here. For like someone that's so central to Dublin, extremely clear, because you get the sea coming over. Budgets really go out the window with all of this. I suppose initially when we set out, you know, to look at this, um, we had, we were of the opinion, you know, that something, you know, of this nature probably would take maybe a quarter of a million to put together. That figure has long since been passed, you know, I mean, to say at this stage, I suppose, the project to date, you know, and we're now in February of 2001, I think the project to date is at somewhere of the order of about £850,000. This was a bedroom, but we're going to put, like, a studio. That's where all the gear is going to be, and I'm going to put... I'm going to soundproof it with black curtains because I need to write in darkness. That's how I always write. So am I an accountant that doesn't worry about money? Yes, I am. I don't worry about money. So I have no excuse not to come up with any of the goods now. None whatsoever. There's no contract signed. We, have, we operate at a completely different level. I met this guy six months ago, literally, and he undertook the whole thing then and he invested a lot of money into it since, a lot of money, and we never signed a piece of paper for it. We operate on the basis of trust and belief. And I think, I think if we operate that way, I'll make a lot more money. Even from that point of view, I'll make a lot more money, he'll make a lot more money, and we'll both be very, very successful as a result of that. I suppose when the solicitors looked, sit down and looked at this arrangement that exists between the two of us, you know what I mean, there is no contract signed between the two of us. Um, it's not even a gentleman's agreement. It's just two human beings that meet on a particular level and just agree that this is something that must get done. If I buy an apartment like this and a car like the car I'm getting and I live this lifestyle and stay in places like the Beverly Hills Hotel, I'm, I'm constantly conditioning the mind into thinking that it's successful, even though it's, it's not really, as in, it's not, I haven't done anything, I have nothing there concrete to say this is my success as such. So by doing all this, the mind, I believe, will fool itself into thinking it's successful and therefore will very naturally and very effortlessly and easily become successful just from that alone. Unfortunately, the neighbours didn't share the same philosophy. The sound level was too much for them. And it was a very expensive apartment anyway. So he moved out, studio and all. Where to? Well, there's no place like home. In fact, there's no place like your mother's attic when it's been converted 
into a studio. Well, here we are. It's, it's funny how some things happen sometimes. Um, one minute I'm in Ballsbridge in Dublin in an apartment, the next thing I know I'm in my mother's attic in Dundalk, which sometimes can be a bit strange. What I find with myself sometimes is how I operate is that I get a very difficult to plan an hour ahead because I can be very spontaneous. It's nearly like the, 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 the outcome or the goal is always the same, but how I'm going to do it can change so much by the second. When Marcus mentioned to me like that he was going to move back to, to Dundalk, and I, for, I said, are you sure? Because he, it wasn't something, I always found when Marcus came back from Dundalk, um, his state of mind wasn't as good as it, as it would have been when he went down home. And uh, like, I don't know, I can't maybe explain that, but I suppose Marcus, um, for want of a better word, sort of anybody, sort of a, a genius has probably never accepted in his own, in his own hometown. If I had my wish, I would love to see him in a steady job. And um, <laughs> But at the same time, I know this is what he wants, and it's his dream, and I'm hoping that he fulfills his dream. But um, I just hope at the end that it... Um, I'm back to a few years and I'll tell you the answer, but I hope that it, um, that it all does work out for him. But as I say, um, there's no guarantees or anything, so I'm just hopeful like everyone else. <laughs> I hope for his sake it does, because he did work harder. Marcus has been locked away in the attic for more than six months rewriting his music. Moira, his personal assistant, is back with her family in Waterford. I hope when I get into the studio now, in a couple of weeks, to work with the Yorks and all these people, and I hope I can feel comfortable and relaxed about, you know, putting my ideas forward or seeing what I like or what I don't like, because that's quite important. When you put so much energy and so much time and so much money into something, like your dream, that you nearly want to make sure that every last note, every crotchet, every quaver is the way that you sort of designed it to be. I'm trying to write music which I hope will have a huge impact on the world. I'm trying to write... Every one of my songs has a certain message which I want to, to reach people, so in order for me to do that, I try to get every ingredient in my life perfect. Which perfect studio did he choose? Capri? Abbey Road? No, it's Windmill Lane in Dublin. His dad has come to support him. An engineer, Brian Masterson, will guide him gently through the busy days ahead. Just in case the writ is written in the wrong place, in bar 13, the writ is on the fourth beat only. Yeah, yeah. Marcus has asked John Fanukin to conduct the orchestra. Whatever you do, we'll, we'll... Oh, yeah. Well, we keep up with you. I think the second violin should be fortissimo di crescendo. They're not clear enough on the take. Gloria Mulhall has put all the musical arrangements together. You think it should be what? John, you play through the downbeat of the next... In Windmill Studios Double, I'm, I'm laying down the base for what I want, which is the classical element. Then when I go to LA, I'm going to put the sort of the, the twist to it, the interesting bit, which I believe will create the style that, that, that Marcus Fern is looking for. Uh, See here. I think it's at this point, I'm not too sure, but I think that's... Can't be it's taken a lot of effort to get this far, and there's very little time. This is the music that will launch Marcus onto the world stage. He has to get it right. Every crotchet, every quaver, every last note. Is it possible that to hold it for like, w at the end of bar 13 for like one beat, to then come in on, on, at the beginning of bar 14? No. Sing, sing it, Marcus. So it... <laughs> no, no, he, he doesn't really mean that. Wait a minute. Just a 13 where it goes, da 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 da. Do you get me? Well, the, I don't think the gap will work, Marcus. That's two against one. I'll do it for you, but I don't. Can we give it a shot? Can we try it? Okay. Can we put a comma at the end of thirteen? Don't write it in if this is only um, ex an exploratory comma. Everybody. Do you want to put money on it? Here we go. That's definitely the idea I want, John. Definitely. Just for the record, I totally disagree. 